Hi guys, I'm Adam from Michigan Avionics and today I want to tell you about a new product that we're selling. It's called the uh, IEFIS Wi-Fi Gateway from MicroKit. Uh, they made this device so that uh, MGL Avionics users who are flying behind an IEFIS, IEFIS Lite, and IEFIS MX1 uh, can use their personal electronic devices like their iPhones and iPads to send flight plans to their EFIS. We also have a bonus feature on here. Uh, because this is Wi-Fi, we can actually connect to GDL90 enabled Wi-Fi ADS-B receivers like the Stratus 3 or a custom Stratux that you've built or the Echo UAT to also pass ADS-B straight into the EFIS. On the IEFIS Lite and IEFIS MX1, any RS-232 port, including one on the extender, will work. On the regular IEFIS, you need to use port 1 or port 2 of the iBox. Uh, what I would recommend is if you already have something like an Echo UAT hooked into one of those two ports, uh, you would replace the Echo UAT with the gateway, since we can now connect to the Echo UAT via Wi-Fi uh, from the gateway and still pass that same information through. Once you get connected, um, the only thing you need to do is go onto the EFIS and make a couple settings changes that we'll talk about uh, and also uh, pull up the page on your phone or your iPad uh, to make sure everything's set up on there. So we'll go through that now. Okay, so first we'll go to menu, then we'll come over to system setup menu and we'll page down until we see serial port routing slash allocations. In there, I'm connected to port 1 on this MX1, and so I have port 1 set to data slash file server. That's going to be the one that you want. It's the very last item on the list. So we'll click that, make sure it's set. Now we'll scroll down to set up LAN, Wi-Fi, and wired. And we'll see at the top it says micro kit Wi-Fi gateway details. If this says anything else, it's not seeing the gateway, and you have to figure out if there's a wiring issue, if there's something else going on. So we'll click into there and we can see that it gives us an IP address of the gateway, uh, which is 192.168.11.1, which will be important for us to, uh, to see in our browser, to be able to use this on our browser. So we'll hit OK. Make sure accept flight plans is checked. The rest of these uncheck for now, they don't actually work yet. Uh, they will be uh, enabled in future software updates though. So we'll go ahead and close everything out now. Now I'm going to pull out my phone. And I'm going to, actually I'm already connected to it I think, but um, first you want to make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi. The uh, password is Wi-Fi Gateway, all lowercase. Comes on the piece of paper in case uh, you forget. Um, my browser, I'm already there, but 192.168.11.1. You can see I have the option of EFIS file transfer, Wi-Fi options, and ADSB, gateway firmware update. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, try setting a flight plan to the EFIS. So I'm going to open up for flight. Oh, if you get this message about uh, not connecting to the internet, uh, you can hit uh, keep trying Wi-Fi. So open up for flight. <clears throat> I have a flight plan in here. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start at Lapeer and we'll go to uh, Saginaw and then we'll go to Alpena. So that's D95 KMBS KAPN. It's a 140 mile flight. Um, we'll hit the share button, we will hit share FPL file, uh, in other apps that might be a GPX file but they both work. Uh, I'm going to save this to files, I'm going to rename it, we'll call it D95 to KAPN, and then I'll hit save at the top. Now we'll come over to um, our uh, web browser here, EFIS file transfer, choose the file, and uh, it should be... There it is, D95KAPN, upload file. It's sending it. Now on the EFUS, you can see it says imported three waypoints. So now let's go ahead and set up the flight plan and see how it looks. All right, so now we're gonna go to flight plan. We're going to go to activate. We're gonna look for it on the system. And now you can see my D95 to KAPN ERT is here. So I'll click on it, it's activated it. Now if I click on flight plan again, you can see that I've got 1.3 nautical to D95. And then I've got 45 nautical to MBS, and then 95.3 to Alpina. And uh, so there's my flight plan. Any uh, waypoint that's in the database for uh, the Navidata file uh, will come up on here. Uh, and if you put in your own custom waypoint, as long as you name it the same thing here and on ForeFlight, uh, it'll import those too. One final tip I wanted to show you here is how to get this page uh, to be easily accessible, at least on iOS devices. I'm not sure about Android. Um, but if you hit the share button at the bottom Safari here uh, and you hit add bookmark, 
um, you can, uh, or actually, I'm sorry, add to home screen. And then now it adds a bookmark to the home screen. You can name it whatever you want. There's the IP address there. I'll just hit add, I'll just leave it as it is. And you can see now I've got an icon on my home screen. So now instead of having to open the browser and type in 192.168.11.1, I can just click here, it pulls it up immediately, do my file transfer, select the file, it's a lot easier that way. So it'll be a quicker way to get to it. Eventually it'll be directly in ForeFlight, but we're not there quite yet. So we hope you enjoyed our little overview of the uh, MicroKit Wi-Fi gateway for IEFIS products. We're really excited to offer this. This has been a long time coming and we think that it's gonna help people get a lot more out of their EFIS systems. Uh, and for that matter, the personal devices that they're using in the cockpit with them. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or reach us through our normal support channels, support.michiganavionics.com, or um, you can call us as well or email us support at michiganavionics.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.